Thanks very much. Yeah, interesting to talk to Rianne. She's only made a couple of changes today. She's got Becky Spencer in goal as well, um, who's been doing very well. Very but uh, what about this lady, Tobin Heath? Look, when she signed from Manchester United, I suppose a lot of people weren't expecting her to come here, but she obviously saw something in the project, Kelly Smith. And what a signing. Brilliant signing by, by Arsenal. You know, she's 179 caps for the USA, World Cup winner. She'll bring that winning mentality to this Arsenal side. You know, she's a good attacking addition to the squad. When she gets the ball... Uh, her feet she makes things happen she can take players on 1v1 she can get herself in the box and she's got an end product too that's lethal whether she gets to the byline cuts it back or whips a ball in and she can pop up with goals herself it's a fantastic signing for this squad what is the most important thing that Tottenham have to get right today Jenny I think they've got to work together I, th I know I think they'll prepare to not have that much possession so it's important that they defend for their lives and they need every single player having a big big performance tonight yeah, and it is a big, big game for a big performance, isn't it? It is the quarterfinal of the Women's FA Cup. Arsenal against Tottenham, a North London derby live from Boreham Wood. And you can see the fans are ready and the teams are just starting to step out. So with that, it's time to hand you over to our commentary duo, the former Liverpool Aston Villa and Leeds defender Stephen Warnock, who is alongside Vicky Sparks. More of a fledgling rivalry, perhaps, in the women's game, but a North London derby is still a North London derby. The top two in the Women's Super League go head-to-head -head in the FA Cup. Both have enjoyed 100% starts to the season, and although Tottenham may be the underdogs tonight, their shock league win over FA Cup holders Manchester City two games ago shows they are capable of an upset. And it would still be an upset against a much-changed Arsenal side. The Gunners have an unmatched pedigree in this competition. No side has won the Women's FA Cup on more occasions. They're looking to lift the trophy for a record-extending 15th time and they have been flying this season under their new boss, Jonas Eideval. Two-time World Cup winner Tobin Heath makes her full Arsenal debut in one of eight changes from that thumping victory over Manchester City. England midfielder Jordan Nobbs comes in for her first appearance of the season after recovering from an ankle injury. And Australia's Lydia Williams gets the nod in goal ahead of regular number one Manuela Zinsberger. Plenty of big guns, including Viviana Miedemar, are on the bench. Tottenham give a full debut to summer signing Tang Jali. The Chinese forward is one of two changes from their win over Reading. Josie Green also comes in with Kit Graham and Jess Naz, who scored a late winner last time out, dropping to the bench. Australia striker Kaya Simon is still out with a hamstring injury. Well, Stephen, eight changes to Arsenal's starting lineup. An opportunity then for Tottenham to take advantage, or just a sign of how strong this Arsenal squad is under Jonas Eideval. I think that's the one thing that you probably would have labelled Arsenal in the past was that they didn't perhaps have that strength off the bench to change games. Now they're showing their, str uh, their strength in the squad and it's a sign of intent for the season that they can change so many players. I think it was interesting what the girls were saying before was about being able to freshen the squad up, freshen the team up because of the way that they play and this is a big game for them. Well, that's it, Arsenal competing on so many fronts this season. As Jordan Nobbs, captain for the day, with Kim Little on the bench and Shalina Zadorski. Bump hands in front of our referee, Kirsty Dow. What a summer it was for Shalina Zadorski, the Spurs captain. All right, I've got a cue lock. And what a moment this is for Arsenal fans all around the world. Tobin Heath, the USA international, two-time World Cup winner, two-time Olympic gold medalist. One of the greatest players around in the women's game, making her full debut for the Gunners. <laughs> Applause ripples round as the players take the knee at the start of this match. The message against racism still abundantly clear. Well, a year ago, almost to the day, Arsenal knocked Tottenham out of the Women's FA Cup here at the same quarter-final stage. The Gunners were 4-0 winners on the night, but Tottenham did frustrate them for long periods of that match. Can the visitors, the in-form underdogs, 
Well, of a shock this time around in what is only their second appearance in the last eight. And that woman there will be so influential for Tottenham. Rhea Percival, New Zealand international, their all-time leading appearance maker. A player with real quality. But Stephen, Tottenham's 100% start to the season. Three wins from three in the WSL. We'd expect it to come under some serious pressure this evening. Oh, it certainly will. They've started the season exceptionally well, but now it's the real big challenge going up against an inform Arsenal team. Here is Knobs. Such a big player for Arsenal to have back after that ankle injury. Early touch for Tobin Heath as well. Well dealt with by Clemeron. Well won over on that far side. Hesitation from Wuben Moy. Williams takes advantage. Josie Green won't find the teammate, but... Rachel Williams, another so experienced in the Tottenham side, won the FA Cup with Birmingham back in 2012. And they'll be looking to their big players, Tottenham, to make an impact tonight. Forward from Clemeron. Here is Williams. Corner Tottenham, right start. Really good start. Down that right-hand side, Rachel Williams being heavily involved early on. A couple of good runs, closing down extreme, extremely well. And an opportunity to put good delivery into the penalty area now. These oh. are moments that can actually change a game as well, Vicky. Good delivery in. Set pieces are huge. And the home fans sense the threat. Can Tottenham provide it? No delivery away by Nobbs. Not the distance she would have wanted. Valti away that time, and the shot driven in is a fabulous one! What a start for Tottenham! And Rachel Williams! A superb hit! And the celebrations are for Tottenham! Would you believe it? Well, it's the worst start that Arsenal could have wished for. But for Spurs, for Tottenham, it's an outstanding start. It's a little bit scrappy on the edge of the box, but as it falls to Rachel Williams, she's got just one thought in her mind, just wrap her foot round it, left-footed shot into the side netting and giving Lydia Williams absolutely no chance. It's an absolute beauty. Superb goal from Rachel Williams. Her second of the season, and my word, does she score some big ones for Tottenham. She got the leveller against Manchester City two games ago. Tottenham went on to win that in rather controversial circumstances. Nothing controversial about that. And that is what Tottenham did not manage to do here last year. They held Arsenal at bay for so long. The late challenge goes in there. And our referee, Kirsty Dow, just making sure that there is no lasting impact there. But it was a heavy one on Josie Green. And a chance for Tottenham and Arsenal to regroup. Yeah, she just overruns the ball ever so slightly. And then it's just a clash of ankles, which are quite painful. They are sore. Hopefully she'll be back on her feet very soon. She won't want to be leaving the field after five minutes and the team going one nil up. Absolutely not. One of two changes for Rian Skinner. Tracy Green coming into the side. Well, we can't see her face, but I think there might be a big smile on Rian Skinner's face. Not on Josie Green. She's receiving the treatment, but in all of the game planning, the fast start was clearly something that Tottenham had worked on, and that's what she said before this match. If we stick to our game plan and do our jobs, you never know. Getting an early goal, what they managed not to do when they played here last year. As we mentioned, they kept Arsenal at bay for so long. Really frustrated them, but never really looked like taking the lead. And now 
Tottenham have something to hang on to. There's also been a slight change of system from Tottenham and from Rian Skinner. They've been playing almost a three or a five at the back of late, which has really suited them, shored them up at the back. Tonight they've gone with a four at the back, a four across midfield, and then just one in behind the striker. Here is Pupin Moy for Arsenal to Leah Williamson, captaining England over the latest international break. In the absence of the injured Steph Orton, Patton under pressure. Does well to squeeze it through to Nikita Paris. Ford's made the run in the centre, Neville made the challenge a good one. I just wonder whether Nikita Paris could have carried on with that run. She'd actually got past Ashley Neville in the left back position. Iwabuchi, Neville again stands up well. Percival, given away, Paris. So dangerous in these positions. Arsenal won the free kick, not forthcoming. Patton takes charge. Here is a bogey. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Now to play to the distress of a bogey. Another new arrival for Tottenham this summer after leaving the Spanish runners up Real Madrid. Former Arsenal player as well, Chioma Abogu. Spent 2015 with them, scored seven goals, including in the League Cup final. Can Arsenal find a goal to get back on level terms? Paris, lovely footwork. Well blocked and cleared eventually by Tottenham. But already in the opening seven minutes, Nikita Paris showing that trickery and skill. Yeah, just got that pace, gets the wrong side of Ashley Neville. And she just can't quite get a shot away, it just falls behind her, and it's a good block, but it's a uh, good play from Nikita Paris. Iwabuchi. Forward from McCabe, playing in a more defensive role, and here is Tobin Heath. Well cleared away by Zadorski, the Spurs captain. A bogey to Neville. Percival, a bogey once more. Tottenham doing very well to deal with that Arsenal pressure. And the way they're moving the ball in these early stages as Becky Spencer took a little bit of a chance there. He's not giving it up yet, now she will. Well, there's the confidence from Becky Spencer in the goal. She's the calmest player on the pitch, just sells the little dummy, little dink over, lovely. And then has the presence of mind to pick out a teammate on the far side. Well, Arsenal aside, she knows very well Becky Spencer. Two spells with them, very little game time. And one of these players on the pitch tonight who will reflect, I'm sure, on just how far the women's game has come. She used to supplement her income at Arsenal by working in the kit in the laundry room for the Arsenal men's side. Those were in the days where you just couldn't make a living from women's football. How things have changed. Might things be changing in the North London derby for Tottenham? They have never beaten Arsenal in their history. They've only avoided defeat once. They have the early lead through Rachel Williams. Green sliding in on Nobbs. And off she goes, the England midfielder. Heath's run goes down, big shout. Heath keeps going. How was that not in? Might still be no, scrambled away. And Tottenham survive somehow. Well, how's that not gone in? Brilliant pay from Tobin Heath down the left-hand side and Nobbs as well. What a scare for Tottenham. And Arsenal usually so clinical. And it's Tobin Heath just here as she gets in the penalty area. And it's just a coming together. Both players going side by side, but Tobin Heath's quickly back on her feet. She didn't even claim for a penalty. 
Yes, honest play from the two-time World Cup winner of the USA. But the chance that followed was such a good one for Arsenal. They might get another one here. Just past Paris. Well, keep, keep, keep getting the ball to Tobin Heath. She looks on fire. She looks so up for this game. A danger whenever she gets hold of the ball. Attacking players. Just tries to find Nikita Paris at the back post. Can't quite just find her. And this is the penalty incident. This is where she goes down, doesn't even claim. Slowly closes, controls the ball, dinks it to the back post, and Nikita Paris just cannot adjust her feet at the back post to sort it out. Well, she'll be disappointed with that, Paris. Two goals already since arriving this summer from Lyon, both in the Champions League. But she is such a proficient forward player. 33 goals in 53 appearances for Leon won the treble with them a couple of years ago as well. And no matter how good you are, when you go to a club like Leon just to get in the side, never mind rack up that number of goals and appearances, speaks to the quality of the England forward. Arsenal needing to show their quality here behind to Tottenham. Ruben Moy, given away, Percival, Williams. Sliding challenge by Heath, dispossesses his metre rail. And here she comes once more, Tobin Heath. Lovely pass. And what a goal that almost was by Mana Iwabuchi. Pure improvisation from the Japan international. Becky Spencer got there. That's a lovely back heel from Tobin Heath to start the move. And then Iwabuchi, she doesn't quite connect with it. Very unfortunate. Actually takes a deflection and comes off Josie Green into the thankful arms of Becky, Becky Spencer. But it's lively play again from Arsenal. That's the danger. And we're actually on the break and they were looking really in a good position but then as soon as it flips as soon as there is a counter attack on arsenal look extremely dangerous yeah it's not quite so spectacular in the end from iwabuchi she did go for it but it would have been a cruel goal to concede for Josie green and tottenham but arsenal having conceded that surprise opener are dominating the play they're dominating the chances but tottenham with that breakthrough, with that goal to hold on to. Williamson. Intercepted by Williams. Here is Valti. Now Williamson. Iwabuchi. Ibogu. A nice touch to take her past pattern. Paris using her pace to get back. <laughs> Top defensive work from Nikita Paris. Well, there's the, the high intensity pressing. Pat Jonas. Deval is demanding from his team. And Ailes missed that there. Heath. Ail didn't miss that time. Green can't take it away from him. This time she does find the back of the net. Mana Iwabuchi, her fourth goal already for Arsenal since arriving in the summer. She scored a stunner against Tottenham for Aston Villa last season. And this one's not too shabby either. Arsenal level, 1-1. One, one. Well, you can't say it hasn't been coming. Again, it's Heath who's involved heavily. Doesn't quite get a, a cross right, but then as it falls to... Iwabuchi on the edge of the box, just uses the defender in front of her, just shifts it round. It's a beautiful finish. We've seen two goals now of the highest order in this game. Lovely little nutmegs on Josie Green. And then just leans back ever so slightly to get the elevation and the curl on the ball. 
And you have to say, Becky Spencer rooted to a goal line, but she had absolutely no chance of getting anywhere near it. So we're as you were in the North London derby, level. How will Tottenham respond? Will Arsenal build on their momentum? Nobbs. Valti goes down quickly by Percival. Bogu gets there first, Percival down, free kick. Well, she is a former Arsenal assistant coach, Rianne Skinner. Spent nearly three years with them. Won five trophies, including the FA Cup in 2011. Found a way to get one over early doors on her former side, but a readjustment of the game plan needed now after Arsenal's level it. How many times have we said it? The early goal can often be your biggest downfall. Your game plan sort of goes out the window. Then you sit back and you think, oh, we have to defend this. And that's what Tottenham did early on. They sat back, they tried to be compact and organised, but such is the quality of Arsenal's attacking line. They keep on constantly finding the gaps in between midfield and defence. And we talk about the impact that Arsenal making eight changes would have. I suppose there's two facets to that. One is the quality of the players they're bringing in. One of those on the ball right now, Nikita Paris. But also, these are players like Nikita Paris, like Tobin Heath, who expect to be starting. That's the level they feel they're at, and they have a minor point to prove, shall we say, to Jonas Eideval. Yeah, they've got competition, haven't they? And that's what brings the best out of the best players. So there's no surprise that there has been a response from the Arsenal players since going a goal down. And they're in again. And again, it's that outlet down the left-hand side. This time McCabe gets there, looking for Iwabuchi. Wait. Hi, Green. Iwabuchi wants more. Paris. Patton. Heath does shoot, listening to the fan in the stands. <laughs> Cleared away by Neville. But it's back to the wall stuff for Tottenham. It's Arsenal almost let Williams in once more. But you mentioned the change in shape from Tottenham, Stephen, and Rhea Percival, see on the halfway line, number 12 for Tottenham. Such a versatile player. She can play out wide, she can play in central midfield, and she is really getting up and providing that support in the number 10 position to Rachel Williams when Tottenham try and counter. And it, it just means that Williams isn't in danger of being isolated so far, although, as Neville clears away when Arsenal come forward, Percival obviously has a job to do there. Yeah, I think this is the job that she's, she's in for, though, is to try and take care of Nobs in the field and Valti just to make sure that they don't dictate play too much. Just sit off Rachel Williams and be that anchor in behind her. A very difficult job. Plenty of communication needed from the midfield players behind. Hale there ahead of Heath. What a test for the 19-year-old as meter rail. Another new signing for Tottenham. Arriving from Aston Villa was their players' player of the year last season, helped keep them up, but facing a player like Tobin Heath. It's going to be a testing evening. Here is Patton. Iwabuchi. Patton. Well away by Ale. Nobbs. Tottenham can't keep hold of it. Iwabuchi. Not this time. It would have been nice, but she does the right thing, out of her feet, gets a sight of goal, decides to take on the strike, and it's just complete dominance from Arsenal now. Jordan Nobbs has taken up some lovely positions in midfield, just being able to break the play up, everything that comes out 
on the edge of the box. She's recycling it. She's making sure that the attacks are sustained. Using all of her experience, but this is a worrying sign for Josie Green. Obviously still feeling the effects of the earlier challenge. Well, she's a player that has seen Tottenham rise through the leagues over the years in her sixth season with Spurs from the third tier to the first tier. Rianne Skinner with instructions for Clemeron, who's been quiet, not able to get into the game so far, really, the France international. She certainly got into the game early on. Rachel Williams, and we've seen two goals of excellent quality. We've seen two goals of great quality, but the actual quality of the game as well has been very high. You can see why the two teams are at the top of the table coming into this FA Cup fixture. Josie Green temporarily off the pitch for Tottenham, at least. And playing against Arsenal with 10 players for however long, not something that any side will want to do. They've got a decision to make here, Tottenham. But bringing her back into the side this evening, clearly part of the game plan, that shift in formation. An early blow for Rianne Skinner and Tottenham if Green won't be able to continue. Midway through the first half, 1-1 in the North London derby in the Women's FA Cup. Here is Patton. Paris. Neville gets a foot in. Harris almost stopped herself there. The Bogu helping out as well. She is the sort of player you need to double up on, Nikita Paris. She absolutely is. And she feels confident as well. You can see whenever she gets Neville in a 1v1 situation, she's thinking, I can take you on. And she's taking on the Tottenham defence here. Won't get past it. If a boot, she will. Thought about the shot. Valti. Again, Tottenham so deep. Well, oh, Josie Green back on for now. Tottenham will keep a close eye on that. Here she is. How will she hold up if Tottenham have to counter? Lovely skill over on that far side. The eventual foul committed by Tobin Heath. Flicked on by Williams. A bogey will chase. Patton is there. That's maybe something that Tottenham will have to look at. Going a little bit more direct, avoiding the press. You know that she's got the pace in behind to trouble any team. Had an influence in the victory against Reading last week. Yes, that victory which preserved Tottenham's 100% start to the season. They're five games unbeaten in all competitions if you go back to last season. But every single one of those wins has been by a single goal. And that is why Arsenal are top of the WSL quite comprehensively on goal difference ahead of Tottenham at the moment. They have scored 12 goals in their three league games so far as Williams looking to counter again. Locked off there by Williamson and Rachel Williams. Not too impressed with that decision going against her. I think she wanted handball. <laughs> and then Leo Williamson just blocked her but won the ball as well fairly. Valti. Look at that run from Jordan Nobbs, the control just 
Let her down, and it's well defended at the back by Tottenham. What a lovely ball. And Leo Valti just sees a, a midfield partner breaking beyond. It's a lovely touch from Jordan Nobbs. You have to give credit for the defending. Just sees it out of play. Flicked on by Williams. Percival up there to chase. Lydia Williams turn to just take a mild risk. Now decision goes against Nikita Paris. Clemmer on down. And you can see what Paris thinks of that. <laughs> She's furious, isn't she? She can't believe what's just happened. She felt like she went in for the ball fairly. It's just a, a little bit of an innocuous challenge. I don't think there was too much in it. I think you could have just actually let play carry on. Both players fully committed to the challenge. Tottenham, though, get the decision. And you can see they know set pieces are going to be key for them in this match. The height coming forward once more from the back. Percival's delivery over everyone. Yeah, just over hits the ball there, Percival. Just, you can see what she's trying to do. She's trying to pick out Rachel Williams at the back post. Well, it is, you're right, Vicky. I mean, when you're backs to the wall so much in the game, you get those set pieces, you have to make the most of them. They've scored off one so far. OK, it was worked out to the edge of the box, and but it came from a set piece. They're just struggling now to get a foothold in the game against Arsenal. Well, we mentioned Tottenham's unbeaten run. Arsenal, 18 games unbeaten in all competitions since losing in the league to the eventual champions Chelsea back in February. We will have a winner on the night though. Whether it's normal time, extra time or penalties, one of these sides will be through to the last four of the FA Cup. The challenge by Iwabuchi slid through by Valti. Heath, Ford's made the run in the centre. Clearance away by Bartrip. One of those is a defender, you think, thank goodness that's flashed past the post. Oh, well done, Molly Bartrip, because she just gets herself in the middle of the goal. The danger is coming down the right-hand side, and you know the quality of Tobin Heath. She's just... See her looking over her shoulder there, Molly Bartrip, and she just reads the situation excellently. Corner Arsenal. Flicked on and flicked over by Leah Williamson. And she almost rises a little bit too early, doesn't she? Just gets above the ball. Can't quite get the purchase that she wants on it. That's totally unmarked, totally unchallenged. And just hangs a little bit too long. She's unlucky, though. She knows it. Should be doing better. Should be hitting the target. Well, she has already scored once for Arsenal this season, Leah Williamson. She's never actually scored more than twice in a single season. But it was a decent opening for the Arsenal and England centre-half. She looks so calm on the ball, doesn't she, when she's stepping out in these positions, hitting these long diagonals, and what a ball again. Superb out to Heath. Still going, Heath. Well blocked by Clermeron, Nobbs will send it to McCabe. Throw goes Arsenal's way. Yes, it's that sort of delivery that is such a threat from centre-half, but so much debate at the moment around Leah Williamson's best position. I think the problem is she has two fantastic positions, centre-half and central midfield whether she can dictate play more in that central midfield position. But as you saw there, she can certainly start attacks off from centre half. Nice problem to have for Jonas Seideval. <laughs> Lovely skill by Iwabuchi, hitting the crowd off their seats. Tottenham deal with it in the end, but 
She is such a talent, Iwabuchi. Just looking at Leah Williamson, what you were saying there. I think in a game like this, when you have got Spurs sat so deep, it gives her the opportunity to step out and become that extra midfielder, so it helps to have this range of passing to pick out the, the midfielders. Here is Casey McKay. Knobs. Heath this time taking up a central position. Cleared by Tottenham. Valti there ahead of Williams. Valti goes down. Free kick. It's just a lovely chemistry between Valti and Knobs. When to go forward, when to sit. And this time it's Valti, Leo Valti picking up the ball, stepping in front. Then dropping the shoulder on Rachel Williams, who just steps across, gives the foul. This is a dangerous position. Well, they have quality all over the park in terms of set-piece deliveries, Arsenal. McCabe is there, but it looks as though it will be Tobin Heath. And it is Heath. Appealing, but nothing doing from the officials. Unfortunate for Tottenham. But Arsenal put the pressure on, and in the end, Tottenham couldn't deal with it. That's all about the quality of ball in from Tobin Heath to start. Give your strikers, your centre backs, an opportunity to go forward and to make the most of it. Uber Moy with the shot, spins, blasts it, and then it hits Tanjari at the back. Oh, it's actually Asmita Ale. She just ricochets off her chest in. You can see she's just trying to get goal side of Nikita Paris. Very unfortunate, but it's good play from Arsenal again. Tough moment for the teenager. Again, just not getting her body shape right, and Jonas Eidevald has seen his side. Come from behind to lead. Free kick Arsenal, Heath down. Just a frustrated foul there from Smith Rail on Tobin Heath. Just trying to stop her in her tracks. She's been the danger player for Arsenal every time she's on the ball the crowd have lifted she's lifted the quality such an unfortunate moment for the teenager here is Patton Neville sliding in does well there Ashley Neville and that's what Tottenham need, just to take a little bit of control at the back, get that own goal out of their heads. She's got a tough challenge ahead of her tonight. Ashley Neville, and Patton and Nikita Paris, 2v, or doubling up on it, if you like. Very difficult task, but she's stuck to it extremely well so far. Well, Ashley Neville getting another chance to take this for Tottenham. A bogey. Percival did well initially, but it's just not coming off for Tottenham at the moment. Bucci, Harris wants more, lovely link-up play from Arsenal, fist in and in again. All the hard work done by Nikita Paris. And Caitlin Ford congratulated, a shake of the head once again from Tottenham. But they cannot deal with those low balls into the area. 
3-1 Arsenal lead. Well, it's all about the movement of Iwabuchi. She moves into a forward position. Lovely little one-two with Paris Hill, um, with, with uh, Nikita Paris, who just fizzes it across the area. Hard, low, makes it very difficult for defenders. Also makes it very difficult for attackers to get there on the speed of the cross. Can't actually see who gets the end touch, but it's Caitlin Ford who actually just gets a toe to it. It's a magnificent finish. Such is the quality from Nikita Paris. She only had to get the slightest of toes to it, didn't she? Tottenham looking to hit back. Arsenal calm. Arsenal deal with it. Iwabuchi, Paris is pointing, Iwabuchi finds her. Unselfish from Paris, out to Ford. Here is Heath, straight at Becky Spencer, but it is wave after wave of relentless Arsenal pressure. It is, and it, what's happened during the game is it's changed who's been the influential player. At the start of the game, it was Tobin Heath, then it went to Jordan Nobbs. Now we've got it as Iwabuchi. She's getting on the ball in such dangerous areas. Here she is again. She is the metronome in that Arsenal midfield at the moment, Mana Iwabuchi. Nice lead by the referee, Clemeron. Tottenham throw. Well, Arsenal back in action again this weekend on the BBC. Five o'clock on Saturday on BBC Two. Away to Aston Villa. And do stay with us at the conclusion of this match for the semi-final draw for the Women's FA Cup. That will be taking place live at the conclusion of this game. Well, still over a half of football to play, but Jonas Eideval's side, well placed for eight wins from eight this season. They had to go through three playoff rounds in the Champions League to reach the group stage, which is a stage for 16 teams. But they navigated that. Three out of three in the WSL. And Tottenham looking to have a say, though, in this one. Almost a rocket. A really good strike. Oh, just as it comes out to the edge of the box, Hammeron with a strike, just lashes at it, can't quite control it. It's a good strike and she'll be bitterly disappointed that she's not hit it on target. Still to score for Tottenham after her move this summer, left Everton, the France international. Lovely layoff from Rachel Williams. Good awareness between the pair of them. Could and perhaps should have punished Arsenal. 3 2, as well as making this an even better game for the neutral. Would have made it interesting before half time from a Tottenham point of view. It was a lovely layoff from Rachel Williams. Her awareness of players in and around her, her teammates, where the runs are, the way to pass. Her work rate as well has been phenomenal. But the home fans enjoying what they are seeing, particularly when this woman is on the ball, Iwabuchi to Valti. Heath. Patton. The bogey chases. Iwabuchi. But this is the challenge now for Tottenham. Firstly, getting the ball off Arsenal. And secondly, they've not scored more than once in any of their last seven games. Goal scoring has been a weakness for them. Their two top scorers last year, Kennedy and Addison. Kennedy now moved on to Manchester City, only scored three goals. And yes, it's a truncated season when you compare it to the number of games in the English Premier League, for example. Still, 
To have your top scorers on three goals apiece in all competitions is not what you want when you're playing 25, 30 games a season and trying to score twice more against this Arsenal side will be a big ask. But they have created openings, as we saw a couple of moments ago with Clermont. The big thing for Rianne Skinner is, is that it was to make them hard to beat. They certainly are a tough team to play against, but such is the quality of Arsenal. They are carving them to pieces. I think that's the biggest compliment that you could play to uh, pay to Jonas Eidervall, uh, is that the changes that he's made, there hasn't been a difference in the way that Arsenal have played and the confidence that they have, and that's what will please him the most as well. Well, it was such a good start for Tottenham. But work to do now for Ian Skinner. Well, the dilemma is, is if you open yourself up as a team and you go for the, to push players forward, you leave yourself to the counter-attack and the quality that Arsenal have. Nobs. Neville using her strength against Paris, who used her strength in return and wins the free kick. That's a very interesting battle between the two of them. Paris coming out on top on that occasion. Yeah, it's been a battle in the first whistle. They've gone after each other straight away. Neville thinks she's done enough, and Nikita Paris just uses a frame, a size, just to get underneath the, the body of Neville. Pinch the foul. Well, we're Arsenal to find a fourth here, as they did against Tottenham almost a year ago to the day at this stage of the FA Cup. This match will be a long way to being done and dusted before half-time. Tottenham, quite simply, cannot concede from this. McCabe's delivery. The header on target and the header in from Nikita Paris. And Arsenal do have that fall. Tottenham do concede before half-time. And Arsenal take a huge stride with that fourth goal to the last four of the Women's FA Cup. And another set-piece and another goal for Arsenal. Lovely delivery in. It's about winning this ball, then you keep it alive. And Nikita Paris does exceptionally well in front of Becky Spencer, just to pinch the ball. Just tempts her in to go for it. But it's brave from Nikita Paris. She's had a good game so far. Deserves a goal. Always been a danger. Much to the delight of the, the fans in and around us. That Nikita Paris has got her goal. And you can see the frustration with which Ashley Neville, just playing the ball forward there, thumped that ball into the back of the net after Paris scored. And they want more Arsenal. Williamson marauding forward. Here is Nobbs. Over the head of Heath. Paris again. Should have been five. Should have been five for Nikita Paris and Arsenal. Well, she'll shake her head, and rightly so. She knows she should be making it five. She knows it's a lovely ball to her at the back post. Great play from Nobbs. Just floats it into an area, and then she just leans back ever so slightly. It's almost too easy for her. She knows she's got too much time. Well charged down by Percival. I think the fans around us felt that as well, <laughs> vicariously. Here is Valsi, Arsenal still look in the mood. Three minutes of added time. We're into them now. 
She certainly looks in the mood. Over from Tobin Heath. Oh, what a break this is. Outstanding break. A switch of play into Tobin Heath. It's that touch, but then it's the runners off her. It's the runs that are making it of an option for her to dip inside and get a shot away. Another opportunity goes back in for Arsenal. Contrasting emotions for the two coaches as we approach half time. And Arsenal's record in the North London derby looks to be staying secure. Never lost to Tottenham. And for all that they will focus on the Women's Super League, the Champions League as well this season, that 15th FA Cup that they are bidding for. Something that's eluded them since 2016, Arsenal. Is certainly a priority again this season. Good closing down again. That time from Rachel Williams. Tottenham still full of running. Arsenal still looking for more goals. This woman's got one. She should have had two. Nikita Paris. Bauti. Space for Patton. And again for Paris. Over from Nobbs. Yeah, but it's good play again, isn't it? Really short, sharp passing, intricate play in and around the penalty box. He'll be delighted with the response of his team going a goal down early on and then responding in a great way. They've been dominant ever since that goal went in against them. And again, the flurry of goals for Arsenal. In those eight matches under Jonas Eideval, they have scored at least three goals in every single one. Yes, some of their Champions League playoffs are against side that they would expect to beat, but against Manchester City, yes, Manchester City have had a host of injury problems, but still, to notch five against the side that finished second in the WSL last season, the current FA Cup holders as well. And they've not fought against Tottenham in this first half. They had an early scare Arsenal after Rachel Williams put the visitors ahead. But since then, the game has been the Gunners. Nikita Paris rounding things off just before half-time. Could have got a fifth as well. Stephen, plenty of work for Tottenham to do in the second half, but Arsenal will feel that already they put this game beyond them. Oh, they certainly will. They'll feel that there's plenty more goals in the game for them, for Rian Skinner. Now it's about perhaps a change of formation, perhaps a change of personnel, but one thing is for sure, they have to shut up shop, they have to stop the runs from midfield, and it's a difficult task. Arsenal are just suffocating them, and they're making it so difficult for them. Arif will come on as well for Tottenham, facing Ashley Neville and Josie Green, who picked up that knock in the first half, has tried to play on, but unable to do so. Graham will offer them something going forward. Harrop will try and shore things up at the back. Well, now it's about stopping the long balls. That's what Tottenham have been struggling with. They've allowed the midfield of Arsenal to dictate, dictate play, to play the long passes. Now, if you don't want runs in behind, you have to stop that at source, and that's going to be so important for them to do in this second half. So we'll see if they can get closer to Jordan Nobbs and Valti in that midfield. And that is the challenge that's going to be set down for them. And change for Arsenal as well. Frieda Mornham coming on for Leah Valti. Oh, she got them off to a perfect start, Rachel Williams, but to say they have a mountain to climb in the second half is an understatement.
So Arsenal firmly in control of this women's FA Cup quarter-final. If Tottenham are to find any way back into this, they need to find as bright a start in the second half as they did in the first, but it's Arsenal who are starting the brighter. Ford's effort is blocked. Away to safety. That's a big block that is from Molly Bartrip because that could have been easily another goal for Arsenal right at the start of the second half. Louis ball from Katie McCabe. A bogey. On and there ahead of Williams. Found by Williams. Arsenal free kick. Well, so much frustration for Rachel Williams and Tottenham after that perfect start in the first half. But it's just about winning those individual battles. Take it. Five minutes by five minutes, as it were, and try and get the better of Arsenal in sections of the game and see where that leads you. Yeah, they've got to try and get as close as they can, but such is the quality of Arsenal and the rotation that they have to find positions on the pitch to hurt Tottenham. They're just struggling to deal with it. It's OK shuffling across the pitch, but they have to get close to people and close them down. And you can see Tang Jia Li just on the edge of the centre circle there for Tottenham, the number nine, has had a very quiet game, the Chinese Player of the Year 2020. One of their summer arrivals. They need her to make an impact in this game. Goal scoring has been a problem for Tottenham, certainly since their promotion to the WSL. She was brought in to help with that. But it's Arsenal, as it so often is Arsenal, who have shown the golden touch in front of the net, Iwabuchi. Fine deflection to Ford. Tottenham just about get it away. Percival with the distance. Abogu. Marshalled by Marnham. Iwabuchi away. Paris. Up against Harrop, taking over those duties from Ashley Neville against Nikita Paris. Another experienced player, Keris Harrop, along with Rachel Williams, an FA Cup winner with Birmingham back in 2012. She's got a challenge on her hands because Nikita Paris has been so lively in the first half, getting a goal as well. And then the second half, she's started extremely well. So it's going to be a tougher, tough evening for Harrop coming onto the pitch. I hope she's warmed up well because she's going to need to be sharp. Well, Viviana Miedemar, one of the options on the bench for Arsenal. But the luxury for Jonas Eideval is that he very well may not have to use her and with their busy schedule Aston Villa in the league on Saturday and then a huge trip as they begin their Champions League group stage against the reigning European champions Barcelona that's why you make these changes you hope the starting lineup can get the job done and you give players like Viviana Miedemar a rest here is Tobin Heath Marnham. Nobs. Heath wants more. Just got the ball trapped under her feet for an instant. But never panics. Never panics. Is always calm. Trusts herself. Did you think that at first? Grealish or Heath with the socks? <laughs> Chris Waddle? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's quite a few, isn't there? Such a distinctive style, though, isn't it? Yeah. 
Iwabuchi left the ball behind. Rachel Williams didn't. Tang Jali through the centre. Williams can't find her. Good position taken up by the Chinese forward. And there was a clear and obvious problem that Rachel Williams has. She wins the ball back and she's the furthest player forward and she's looking for support and it's just not quite arriving for her. She's in Heath. She's found by Katie McCabe. First of all comes across. But that combination is developing nicely for Arsenal. Tobin Heath, of course, a forward player. Katie McCabe, so versatile, has been playing further forward on the left wing in the last couple of matches with Steph Catley playing at left back. But taking up the full back position this evening, the Republic of Ireland International. But on occasion, we've seen Heath drift in field. Katie McCabe get forward. So much danger down the left hand side. Yeah, it's a really good partnership, isn't it? I mean, Katie McCabe will know what type of service she would expect being a winger herself. So in that position, she's obviously thinking about the pass into Tobin Heath. Here is Tang. Williams. Clemeron, nicely moved by Tottenham. Tried to force it through to Kit Graham. Hail away. Nobs. First of all, can't stop her. Kit Graham will. Percival. The bogey. Well defended by Patton and Paris between them. But then, sloppy pass. And Tottenham can come forward once more. Graham. Still going, Kit Graham. Very well defended by the composed Leah Williamson. Yeah, lovely play from Kit Graham initially, but then credit to Leah Williamson. She relaxes, she's calm, just steps across. Well, Arsenal have a problem here. I think it's Nikita Paris. Just goes down on the far side, which will be a concern. Just an elbow to the midriff from Rachel Williams. She's just trying to protect the ball, going back to Harrop, making sure that she just protects it, gives her more time on the ball. And it's just an elbow into the midriff of Nikita Paris. She'll be okay. She won't want to come off. Not after the first half she's had. Scored Arsenal's fourth just before the break. Really should have had a fifth as well, volleying over with a goal at her mercy. But it speaks volumes for the strength of not only Arsenal, but the developing strength in the WSL. She went to Lyon to win the Champions League, Nikita Paris. She did that. And now she's come back to the WSL and will have hopes of winning it once more. Arsenal still the only English side to win the Champions League or the European Cup, as it was in 2007. Good play by Tang Jali. Tottenham corner. Wow, oh, really good run from Sanjali in behind. Stretches Arsenal for the first time, really, in this game with the ball in behind. We said earlier on in the first half, what did they, what could they change? This is what they could change, just that ball in behind, stretching them. Gets a team a corner. Well, the bodies are in there, but Tottenham play it short. Much to the glee of the home fans. It's really disappointing, isn't it? You've got all these centre halves going up pit, up the pitch, and coming on with a loose touch, but 
Kit Graham should just be saying to it, no, stay away. This is an opportunity for us to put the ball into the area. Lovely skill from Clemeron. Williams out to Tang. Williams. Miss Q. Very good save from Lydia Williams. Chioma Ubogu almost getting a goal back for Tottenham. Fabulous stop from the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's a lovely ball in from Rachel Williams, and it's just a miss. Sort of a poor touch at the back from that, and, and then it just breaks. But what a save this is. Had nothing to do apart from the first minute of the game where she conceded, but then that is a huge save for her team. And a boggy did well to get the shot away with the power on it. And she had to deal with that as well, Lydia Williams. Arsenal counter, Paris. Ruben Moy sees Nobbs. Free kick. There's the high energy again, the break. Lovely play from Nikita Paris and Ruben Moy. And then into Jordan Nobbs, who's Again, joining in the attacks, the incredible engine. But this is good goalkeeping from Lydia Williams. She's made a great save to put it out for a corner, and then she's dealt with the corner herself. Tottenham have a free kick to deal with. Easily dealt with, and they win a set piece of their own as well. Well, more changes afoot for Tottenham. Angela Radisson, one of those coming on. Nobbs. Zella Ayan as well, preparing to be introduced from the bench. More firepower for Tottenham, they need it. McKay will just spin away from Nobbs. Watch behind by Clemerot. Well, here comes that double change. And it's the goal scorer, Rachel Williams, replaced by number 14, Angela Addison. And what a goal it was. Such a lovely strike early on in the game. Left-footed strike into the side netting gave Lydia Williams absolutely no chance. Replacing number 18, G. Number 23, Rosella Ayala. And Rosella Ayan is on as well. And Chioma Bogu is off. After almost pulling a goal back for Tottenham. We spoke about what Tottenham had to do in the second half, Stephen. Do you feel that they have done it? Yeah, they have to a certain degree, but Arsenal still looking very dangerous on the break. But they've been more adventurous going forward. They've created a couple of opportunities themselves. And that is one that just about cleared the stand. Well, it's worth noting the different jobs that both of these managers are having to do as well. Jonas Seideval. Very much challenging for the title with Arsenal, challenging for the Champions League as well. Looking very much as though they will be challenging in the last four of the FA Cup. Tottenham only in their third season as a fully professional club, the third top flight season in their history as well. They finished seventh and eighth. Decent mid-table finishes. 
but they are at very different stages and it's worth noting that four and a half years ago Arsenal beat Tottenham 10-0 in an FA Cup tie and that gap has closed although the home fans might be happy but the away supporters will not be smiling to see players of this calibre coming on for Arsenal Kim Little and Beth Mead real favourites here Jordan Nobbs off a successful comeback for her after that ankle injury and Tobin Heath on her full debut still waiting for that first Arsenal goal but she has absolutely shown her quality this evening the USA international well, both being outstanding in the game both contributed so much to the, the game Nobbs has She's been in that holding role, but broke from midfield so well, linked the play up. And then Tobin Heath has just been instrumental in most of the attacks. A little bit quieter in the second half, perhaps a fitness level's just tiring without playing too many games so far. But great signs for her. And such a positive sign for Arsenal as well over the summer. Heath, who of course spent last season with Manchester United, didn't stay with them after her contract expired, did come back to the WSL and chose to come to Arsenal. That's probably the quality of substitutions that managers will be envious of within the WSL, the quality that he's bringing onto the pitch. And that's allowing him to compete at that highest levels, both in the FA Cup, WSL and the Champions League. Tang away for Tottenham. Ruben Moy then tackled Beth Mead. <laughs> Mix up there for us. Oh, they've still got the ball. <laughs> Beth Mead has the biggest smile on her face. She gives a thumbs up to lots of Ruben Moy. She's probably thinking, I've been on a few at the end of them in uh, training as well. I'm used to that. Bit of a surprise when it catches you in game. McCabe. What a ball in that is. Little couldn't get the shot away. Corner well defended by Percival, but it's all about the delivery there. Yeah, lovely ball from Katie McCabe on this left hand side. We talked about her quality earlier on, and then it's the touch here. Magnificent touch, but from Little. But credit to Molly Bartrip. She went to ground, but she didn't dive in too much. She just anticipated the shot. Needs delivery. Will come to Little. What a rocket! And the audacious attempt. Mead still there. And Marnham does. Well, the applause is ringing out. The cheers curtailed as the ball goes behind. And Tottenham survive almost, almost for Frieda Mornham, her first goal for Arsenal. Mm. I don't think the crowd realised what had actually gone on. They were all celebrating, but as it comes to the back post, everyone just thought that the net had rippled, but it wasn't. It ricocheted off the backboard, off the advertising hoardings, onto the net. Still looking to open that Arsenal account then. Freedom on him, the Norway midfielder. Arrived this summer from Swedish side Lingsherping. Just 22 years old. Very bright young talent. And again, more international quality for Arsenal to add to this side. Well, one back by I am. Pass it. I am. Irabuchi tracking back. And Irabuchi dispossessing Graham well. But she's certainly given them something different, Kit Graham. 
Yeah, she certainly has. And there's been a few more numbers sort of let go, if you like, to go forward. They're gambling that little bit more. They're trying to support as much as they can. Well, high-paced possession football. That is how Jonas Heidevall describes his play. There was certainly pace on that finish from Monum, but not quite the accuracy, but very much looks as though he is heading for eight wins from eight in all competitions. Has experience in the Swedish leagues, led Rosengard to three Swedish league titles during his two spells there, most recently in 2019. But this to test himself in what many would say is the strongest league in women's football in the world. And to do it with a club like Arsenal, such a strong platform built by Joe Montemoro, who left at the end of last season, title winner, of course, with Arsenal in 2019. But Arsenal so dominant in the women's game for so long. It's been Chelsea and Manchester City's game for too long, the Gunners will feel. Back to the very top echelons on a consistent basis. That is the target for Arsenal. And that is what Jonas Eideval wants to bring. I think one thing the players will have enjoyed is the tempo at which they play at. You can see that the way that they're playing tonight, they're really enjoying it. They enjoy the style of football that he's coming in, trying to implement. And it's certainly pleasing on the eye as well. And on the other side, the tempo from Tottenham has been good as well. Um, it's so difficult for the visitors when they just can't get hold of the ball, but closing down, making the runs, nice movement. She won't be pleased with the scoreline, Rianne Skinner, but they are coming up against one of the best sides in England, in Arsenal. And are there positives to take for Tottenham from this performance, despite the scoreline? Well, second half, I'd say, certainly, Kit Graham in the centre midfield position. She's been exceptional. She's broke play up, but she's also been confident on the ball. She's held on to it. She's not panicked under pressure. Tottenham wanted the foul for the little push by Mead on Ale, but nothing doing. It's a real understanding of how Arsenal play the game. They know what's being asked of them from the manager. There's always ideas in the head of how to get out of situations, and that's the one thing that Tottenham have really struggled to deal with tonight. Whenever they feel like they've got in positions, Arsenal have always had an answer. Harris with the ball in, bar trip away. <laughs> she has to look at this game and see where his team can improve what the standard is to compete at the highest level. And sometimes it's re-watching the, the game again, having an understanding of it. The speed in which Arsenal move the ball is one of the main qualities that Arsenal have, but also the speed in which they press when they lose it as well. see the desire to get forward center half and number three just jogging back over the halfway line lots of Ruben Moy joining the attack on that occasion but this is comfortable now for Arsenal Tottenham's biggest test of the season certainly huge test in the Champions League coming up for Arsenal against the reigning champions, Barcelona. Spencer under pressure, <laughs> calmly done again by the former Arsenal goalkeeper. Yes, they concede the throw, but <laughs> she
She's so calm in and around a penalty area, Becky Spencer. Oh, she certainly is. It's been a, a real indifferent night for her. Perhaps at fault for the Nikita Paris goal, but she has been calm. She's made some good saves as well. Well, her job is done this evening. Full Arsenal debut for Tobin Heath. And she'll hope to be involved again on Saturday. BBC Two, Aston Villa against Arsenal. That match switched from Sunday to help Arsenal in their preparations for that Champions League trip to Barcelona. Viviana Miedemar watches on. I'm sure she will be watching the semi-final draw, which is following this match live here on the BBC. Lovely ball from Zadorski. Graham, clever footwork. Almost. Well, that's what she's done so well since she's been on the field of play, Kit Graham. Just getting on the half turn. Lovely take. Lovely drop of the shoulder as well. And then that left foot that she possesses. Unfortunate. Just has a little look up to see where Lydia Williams is. Strikes it across goal. She's either hoping for the far post or for the strike partner to put it into an open goal. But again, she's been the positive player since she entered the pitch at half time. Risky from Vivian Moy. Too risky. Graham tried the first time, won't get a second bite. And Arsenal got away with one there. Can they turn it into an advantage? Mead up against Dale. She'll go for it, Mead. And it's slid in. A second of the evening for Caitlin Ford. A fifth for Arsenal. And they are striding through to the semi finals of the Women's FA Cup in some style. What a break this is. Lovely play from Beth Mead down the left-hand side, and she just faces Ale up and just pushes her back. Then it's about the quality of pass into Caitlin Ford. Caitlin Ford just outstretches, gets in behind, and it's a magnificent finish on the stretch. Really good goal. You just think that Tottenham were on the break, and at the blink of an eye, it's down the other end, and that is the quality that Arsenal possess on the counter-attack and the speed at which they move. And it's the substitution, the substitute Beth Mead, who makes a big contribution to her strike partner. Now, can Tottenham fashion another chance? I am saw Lydia Williams not quite off her line, but meandering along it. It's a good effort from Ayan. She just sees the keeper off a line ever so slightly. Goes for that top corner. Not far away. Well, she had such a prolific spell in Cyprus a few years ago, Rosella Ayan. As Arsenal almost caused himself a problem from that goal kick, but hasn't been able to replicate that form in England. Spells with Bristol City and then Tottenham. I think one of the reasons the tempo of Arsenal has also dropped is from the substitutions at half-time. Belty and Nobs in midfield were so influential and just dropped off a little bit. Their tempo in the first half was so high and it made Arsenal play at a quicker pace. They've just dropped off a little. Mead uses her head, she'll use it again, looking for Little, 
Well blocked by Zadorski. Arsenal not content with five. Reed again looking for that Rana Ford. He's finding a lot of space on this left hand side, Beth Mead. Tottenham pushing players forward. She's finding gaps. Well, blocked away by Tang Jali. Well, an opportunity for Arsenal to make their final two changes, and they do. And there will be a very positive reception here, not just for Leah Williamson, but for the returning Victoria Schnaderbeck. The Austria international hasn't played since November last year due to a knee injury, another knee injury. She's really struggled with them since arriving in 2018 from Bayern. And she makes her first appearance in nearly 11 months. And Caitlin Ford on the score sheet twice. Replaced by her compatriot, Steph Catlin. She's done a, a job tonight, Caitlin Ford. Led the line extremely well. Always pressing from the front and making it difficult for, Spur, for Tottenham. And this change would also allow Casey McCabe to pick up a more advanced position on the left wing with Catley on. All the Arsenal players advanced at the moment. Patton looking for Mead. Paris, lovely touch. Mabuchi went down, no free kick. Iwabuchi. Lovely little one to Paris. This is beautiful from Arsenal. Hassan's effort blocked. Behind for the corner. And they just overplay, don't they? They want that perfect goal. Nikita Paris gets the opportunity to get a shot away, decides against it, but what lovely, smart football. The thing about Arsenal is they always try and walk it in. Can't say that when they've scored five. <laughs> Catley. Marnham. Catley wants more. Schnaderbeck. Harris will chase. Again, the little one two. Causing problems for Tottenham and causing problems eventually for Arsenal. Don't beat the offside track. But it's nice play again, one and two touch football, just dragging players out of positions and perhaps hasn't had the same influence in the second half. Uabuchi. Substitution for Tottenham, replacing the number 13 as Misa Final change for Tottenham and a 19 year old for a 19 year old. Esther Morgan on for as Misa Ale. And that unfortunate own goal for Asmita Ayl, which gave Arsenal the lead in the first half. A lead which they have comprehensively built on and deservedly so as well. But particularly when you concede a goal that is so unfortunate, it does just deflate not just you, but your side as well. Yeah, it does, but I thought she did well. She responded well. It's not been an easy night for her at all. Players that she's come up against, coming up against Tobin Heath and also coming up against Beth Mead on that left-hand side. This is a great experience for her. She has to learn from it and she will. 
look back at the, the game, we spoke about that earlier on, but individually as well. Full commitment there. Arsenal get the decision. Pace has just dropped out the game a little bit now. A lot of changes onto the pitch. It all often happens. But such is the scoreline as well, the dominance from Arsenal. They played it within themselves a little bit in this second half. You have to give credit to Tottenham as well. The changes that they've made have come on and had a little bit of an influence on the game, made it tougher. Miscontrol from Catley. And I'm sure for her side now, as we tick into the final 10 minutes, just to get another goal. Yes, it will only be a consolation, but to end that run of not having scored more than once in their last seven games, to do it against Arsenal as well. At this stage, it would be something positive to take away. Yes, Arsenal certainly not giving up on getting more goals either, and that's fired into the substitutes bench rather. Catley. Mead. Catley once more. Mornham. Again, Tottenham dropping deep. Passing forward to Iwabuchi. Works it to Paris. Dangerous ball away by Percival. Arsenal corner. to say Harrop's done extremely well since she's come onto the pitch. Nikita Paris has found it difficult in the second half to really get on the ball and have an impact in this second half. Tottenham get the distance. So does Little. Well, they've sent out a message already in the WSL Arsenal, beating their title rivals Chelsea on opening day and injury struck Manchester City. And this just another reminder that Arsenal mean business this campaign when it comes to trophies. Little. Harris and Catley between them, couldn't find it, Morgan could. Did extremely well there, Morgan, because she stayed with the runner, didn't dive in, just made sure she was strong enough to get a toe across and concede the corner. Tottenham through and through, Esther Morgan came through their academy, childhood Spurs fan as well. Doing a shift for her beloved club there. Solid header again from Harrop at the back post. Iwabuchi couldn't control it quickly enough. Excellently read by Frieda Mornum. Doing extremely well there to sense the danger. Might be in trouble here, though. Hasn't quite sensed it there. Tottenham, can they find one more consolation? Addison to Graham. Addison's continued her run. <laughs> Didn't quite work for her this time. Kick Graham. Comes out to her. She's just having a look up, looking for... Sanjali in the back post, but overcooks the cross, goes out. She's got better quality than that. She'll be disappointed. Catley, 
Look at the run from McKay. Mead is there in support just behind her. Here is Beth Mead. Mornham, Catley, McCabe. Well dealt with by Tottenham. Hassan's effort blocked. Graham will try and spring the counter. First of all, the furthest forward. Well, you can see why they're rushing it, Tottenham. But if they just had a little more composure there, that could have turned into a decent counter. And that's the difference between the two teams at times. There is more quality, more composure from Arsenal. Paris. Again, can't get the better of Harrop. Away by Zadorski. She's not fallen for any of the tricks from Nikita Paris, is she? She's just finding it difficult. Can't outpace her. She has to go wandering in the pitch, but she is definitely capable of doing that. Meet. Misunderstanding. But thoughts now will turn for both of these sides to their upcoming games. Newly promoted Leicester for Tottenham on Sunday, yet to pick up a point this season, and then Brighton at home. Arsenal away to Aston Villa on Saturday. That's live on BBC Two. And then that mouth-watering clash with European champions Barcelona and Arsenal's thoughts going further forward will be towards the semi-finals of the FA Cup taking place at the end of October and the final on the 5th of December, a date deliberately chosen by the FA at Wembley to mark 100 years since the FA effectively banned women's football in England by saying it couldn't be played on FA-affiliated pitches. Well defended by Morgan, but deliberately chosen by the FA to, to reflect how far the women's game has come since then, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Women's FA Cup as well. Good defending again here from Mr Morgan. Sensing the danger behind her. Corner Arsenal. Paris was in there. Tottenham just getting up on it. Well, it's only the five, Stephen, but it could easily have been more for Arsenal. Might be now. Not with that control. No, it could have been. And they, at times, they've tried to walk it in in the second half. But when they've needed to be clinical, when the game was sort of tough for them to break down, and they stepped up on, stepped on the gas, if you like, and showed their quality. But in the second half, I, th I do think they've took the foot off the pedal a little bit. They've realised that this game was long over but the crowd will be delighted with what they've seen tonight and inspiring the next generation as well calmly done by williams interesting battle between her and zinsberger for the arsenal number one shirt zinsberger so far getting the nod this season after rotating with the australian last season but given the chance williams in the FA Cup, yet to see whether Jonas Eideval will see the FA Cup as a competition for her or should Arsenal reach the final. Who will be between the sticks? Zadorski away. Tottenham having to keep their concentration until the end because Arsenal just do not let up. No, they certainly don't. And they have to give credit to Bartrov and Zadorski. It's been a tough night for them. They haven't been that well protected at times, but... Anything in and around them, they've battled, they've been competitive. The height is there for Arsenal. Becky Spencer is there for Tottenham. She's looking up for a, a quick throw out, a quick kick. She's got no options ahead of her. The rest of her team are saying, just please keep hold of it. We're tired, we need a break. Two minutes of added time at the end of this women's FA Cup quarter-final. The 
North London derby is once again going in favour of the Gunners. Nikita Paris given the player of the match in the stadium. And she has certainly proved a live wire this evening. Is there to be a final flourish from Tottenham over the head of Addison? Well, they've given it everything right until the end. But in the end, Arsenal's quality throughout this game has shown. And she'll know that she knew it was a tough task, Rianne Skinner. And his side just go from strength to strength this campaign. Having to deal with an early setback as well, which isn't always the case for Arsenal. They are often the side that get themselves in front. But we talk about that composure, and that is what Arsenal have shown this evening. Never ruffled, never panicked when Rachel Williams scored early on. Confident in the process, in their ability, and a confidence that has been well justified this evening. Paris, a cave through the centre, flag goes up. continues victors in the North London derby against Tottenham once again the owner side of our side stride through to the last four and Stephen Warnock they had an early scare but after that Arsenal's quality simply shone through yeah they ran out comfortable winners and the quality both in and out of possession was hugely impressive the owner side of Elf will be delighted with his team's resilience, their understanding of what he's asking them to do. And this is a big result to put them into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And eight changes as well for this Arsenal side. We saw the likes of Kim Little and Beth Mead coming on in the second half. We didn't even get to see Viviana Miedemar. That strength in depth, which, as you said at the start of this match, is something that has been lacking for Arsenal in recent years seems to be there this season well so often when you make so many changes there's a it's a disruption to the style of play a disruption to the way the momentum has been at the start of the season that wasn't evident evident at all they were outstanding I'm sure he will be delighted with his squad's response and now he's got headaches and he's but he's also got the the, the beauty of going well I know I can trust my squad and that's so important moving forward in the season big smile from him there full debut for Tobin Heath as well Chastening for Tottenham, although there were positives to take against a rival who won the day, were simply superior. Full time, it finishes. Arsenal 5, Tottenham 1. Yeah, thank you very much, Vicky Sparks and Stephen Warnock. Joining me pitch side still are Kelly Smith and Jenna Scalacci. And I suppose, well, Jenna, I'll go to you first. Sobering defeat for Tottenham, I guess. but. You know, when you think of the context that, you know, this is only their third season in the top flight, you know, they have they have made progress, haven't they? This is a learning curve, if anything. Yeah, I think when you put into context and break it down who they're playing against, it's against an Arsenal team who are in the form of their life at the moment. And I think, yes, they'll be heartbroken with this result, but 
Yeah, Tottenham are a team in, a, in the, the beginning of a process now. They're, they're only at the beginning and there's lots to learn. It was a much improved second half. I thought the substitutions that come on, they brought energy. I thought Kit Gray in particular was a lot more creative, breaking up the play in that midfield area. Of course, they, they look devastated there and they will be and it will hurt, but they'll go away and they can keep their heads up high. You know, they, they hopefully this doesn't knock their confidence too too much. They're a great They've got a great squad there and it's now bouncing back and, and the, the more senior players keeping the group together. And have you seen enough in this squad that, you know, that shows that bounceability factor? Absolutely. I mean, obviously, they haven't had to bounce back yet this season, so this will be a new challenge for them that they haven't experienced together. Um, and it's going to take a team to bounce back, and I've no doubt they're, they're a great group of girls and, and, and they'll, they'll hurt that we're eager to get back on the pitch and put this right now. Yeah, they certainly will. Well, the draw for the uh, semi-final of the Women's FA Cup will be coming up after this. Arsenal bidding for a 15th FA Cup final, uh, FA Cup win, I should say, which would be incredible. They're looking so sharp this season, Kelly. They are, and even though they went down a goal um, early on by Rachel Williams in the third minute, you know, they showed such composure. They never panicked. They were calm. They were moving the ball from left to right. They were getting the key players like Jordan Nobbs, Iwabuchi on the ball, players that can dictate the tempo. It's great to see Jordan Nobbs back after just over eight weeks out, um, getting her some minutes ahead now, moving on in the season. Um, you, you know, they just look so threatening every time Nikita Paris got on the ball or Tobin Heath going 1v1. And obviously, we haven't got the, the their top goal scorer, Medima, playing. Caitlin Ford led the line so brilliantly with two goals. So they've got players that are world class that they can rotate around. You get Beth Mead on. That was her 33rd yeah. assist um, this this whole, not just this season, obviously, but the whole <laughs> um, WSL campaign. Yeah. Uh, only Karen Carney has 35. So she's assisting, she's the assist queen um, in this side. So she's on. Form. And she can put the ball away as well. Exactly. <laughs> you know, she's scored, already scored a couple. So they've got such a rotation of players. So, so effective in the final third. And it, it was hard for Tottenham tonight. But, you know, they were so defensive at times. And Marston were just playing in and around one and two touch. It's, it's a classy side that they played against. Yeah, it is. They are a class act, aren't they? They, were in, they went into the second half 4-1 up. Caitlin Ford made it 5-1. Ah, you were Bucci taking a selfie here. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> or was it for one of the fans? Brilliant. And, I mean, you know, you look at these new signings. I mean, they have been so effective for this Arsenal side. They've rejuvenated this Arsenal side. Because there was a time, Kelly, in the last couple of seasons, you'd look at the uh, the bench and there were no players that could come up. But, you know, you've got players like Caitlin Ford who are still, you know, fairly new in the WSL. But they've adjusted brilliantly, haven't they? Yeah, and this is Beth Mead. What she does best, she takes players on. She just shifts the ball. And that pass there is absolute quality. You know, she can see Caitlin Ford. She's picked her head up nice and early. She attacks the defender. And it's just that little shift there. She gives herself a second and the delivery. It's all in the delivery. And it's saying, here you go, Caitlin. Put that on a plate for you and you deliver that that goal. And, and that's just a, a, well, a, a great finish by Ford. Um, and that's her second goal. Yeah, that's fantastic. Caitlin Ford arrived during COVID, actually.